Now, if you're using WooCommerce to run an online store for yourself or for a client, there are many challenges to getting that potential buyer across the finishing line. You may want to provide them with upsells to increase the spend amount or handle abandoned carts. Now, all of this can be handled through WooCommerce and some additional plugins, but we all know when it comes to plugins and WordPress, it just tends to slow your site down. Today, I'm going to show you the new free tier the Checkout X has recently added. Now, this could easily help you put your checkout process into overdrive and provide a mobile optimized experience for all of your users, offer easy upsells, add additional payment gateway processors, and several other incredibly useful features without costing you a single penny. So how about we go ahead, set up an account and get started and see what this free tier actually offers us in real life. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a quick look at Checkout X, the pricing, what you're going to get for the free account, and what you get if you decide further on down the line to upgrade to a paid account. So if we hop over into the pricing section, you can see the free forever plan gives us all of these options at the top, and we'll take a look at some of those as we go through this video. But the key differentiator, along with some of the extra more advanced features, is this option. It gives us a thousand euros worth of upsells. Once you kind of go past that thousand euros, then you can't use that feature anymore. But for smaller stores that are just getting started with using something like this, then a thousand euros worth of upsells could be incredibly useful. Then if you want to move on up to the unlimited, you can see that it has a 39 euros per month charge and you then charge 5% of the upsell revenue. The key thing to remember here is that's 5% of the upsell revenue, not 5% of the store revenue. So pretty cool. Then if you go up and you need to have even more so, you're getting a lot more sales than something like the Platinum service where that drops to 2.5% of your upsell revenue with a higher monthly charge, maybe something you want to take a look at. But we're going to stick with the free forever plan for this particular video. So I'm going to go ahead and just hit the sign up button and I'm going to go through and I'm going to set up my own account. So this is the first time I've done this. This is me working through this with you guys. So you get to see this exactly the same as I do. So there's my details all put in. Let's just hit that create my account and you can see this is now store all the information. I probably need to go ahead and just confirm this with my email. So I'll do that just to make sure everything is up to speed. And then we'll take a look at how we get started linking this through to our store and then create our first checkout process and take a look at the upsells. Okay, so let's go through the process now of connecting this up to our store. So we'll hit continue to the next step. And this is going to say, I already have a WooCommerce store or we have Shopify. Well, we're going to work with WooCommerce. We'll just connect that. And now we need to drop in the link to our store. So I've already got a store created. This is just a test setup. And we're going to copy the domain from there. So I'm going to copy that. And we're going to head back into Checkout X and we're going to drop that inside there. Now you need to make sure that you have a HTTPS account set up. So you have SSL on your account. In this instance, that's already set up. So we're going to hit connect, check out X, and everything then should take us to the next step. So this is now going to give us the opportunity to say what we're going to give access to on this site and whether we want to approve or deny it. And you can see it goes through and it wants access to create webhooks, to manage coupons, customers, and so on. So these are all things you can do inside the Checkout X dashboard. And this gives you one centralized location to be able to handle this. If you have one store, it's very useful. But if you have multiple stores, it could be even more useful. So let's just confirm that. We'll say we'll approve those options and that will then connect everything up. So you can see now this is going to go through the remainder of the checkout process. We're going to go ahead and we're going to add in the Checkout X plugin. So off camera, I've quickly gone ahead, installed the Checkout X plugin and also gone ahead and just confirmed that. So that's the first part of things done. Next up, we need to add some shipping rates on your checkout. So if we click on add, this will take us over now so we can start adding custom shipping rates. So I'm going to, again, I'm going to just fill this information out quite quickly just so you don't have to sit here and watch it. It's all pretty self-explanatory, I would say. I'll just set a really basic flat shipping rate up. You can obviously set things up that's more akin to what you need with your store. We'll save that shipping rate. And you can see the shipping rate is now being created. So that's that side of things done. Next, we can just add a payment method to our checkout. So we'll click on add a payment method. We'll choose options from here. For this, we're going to keep this really simple and say cash on delivery. But you can see there are a lot more options. And this is a great way of being able to integrate with additional sort of payment processes that you don't necessarily have as part of WooCommerce, especially the free version, which is quite limited. But we'll keep this to cash on delivery and save our payment method. And that's that side of things done. 
And then the final thing we have to do is preview and publish our checkout. So we'll hit preview and publish, and this is going to show us what the typical checkout is going to look like. As you can see, it's a little bit fresher and cleaner than what you typically get straight out of WooCommerce, but most of the things you'd expect are included in here, including the shipping rate, the, the sort of payment delivery options, the shipping details, and so on. And on the right-hand side, we can see whatever kind of product we're going for. Okay, so that's the kind of basics. Those kinds of things are all set up. But let's just take a look at the top of what we have. We go back to our dashboard. This takes us back to where we are originally, where we started off with our sort of checkout list. We've also then got things like upsells, automatic discounts, buy link, billing, configuration, and help center. Let's take a quick look at the configuration and see what's inside here. So this is where we can see we've got our, our checkout and so on. So we can say we we'll preview and publish this when we're ready. We can check and create a custom domain for this. So by the moment, you can see we've got checkout at wptutsdev.com. You can set that up to whatever you want. I'm not going to worry too much about this. I don't want to go into too heavy a detail about how to configure all this. But if you'd like to see that, please do let me know in the comment section below. And I'll create a more focused, dedicated tutorial covering more of the nuances of what you can do inside here. You can customize the checkout. So this is where we would come in and change the money format. If we wanted to work with something different, we could upload our store logo, favicon, apply security badges, and make sure that the color side of things ties in nicely with the actual look of our store. So make sure that everything is seamless for the end user. And again, you've got then links for the returns policy, privacy policy, terms and conditions, those kinds of things. We also have the option then to configure some additional things to do with our checkout process. Whether we want to require a phone number, a checkout, which can be useful in many instances to require an address number in the address field. And you also do things like pre-check email marketing checkbox, which if you are following things like GDPR, you want to make sure that is not checked. You do not want to automatically check the email marketing checkbox because that's a bit of a no-no. You can see we've got display powered by Checkout X on the checkout page and we get a little notification saying that, well, you're using the free account. If you want to get rid of this, you have to pay for a paid account. So that's one of the small prices you're going to pay for having a free account. And then you've got the display discount code field outside of the shopping cart on mobile. Now, the nice thing with this is this is definitely a mobile first setup. We'll take a look at the mobile options a little later, see how the checkout process looks. Now, if you want to add some additional sections underneath your checkout to maybe convince your potential purchaser to buy something or do something else, then you've got these sections we can add in here. So we can add a section in. We've got a new about section and we can, if we want to, open that up and we can drop in some additional information like a title, an icon and some text whatever you kind of want to do and you can add additional ones on top of that if you want to as well i'm not going to worry too much about that so i'll remove that and then finally you have the option to customize the thank you page if you want to check that out we can say we'll preview that and this is what the checkout page will look like to the end user so we can add some level of customization not a lot at this point it is still pretty limited you can see we have some macros or short codes we can use like the total amount total amount with upsells those kinds of things and you can drop html code inside here if you want to drop in things like google pixels facebook pixels tracking things like that you can also add that inside here but there is easier, better ways of doing that through the integrations. And we'll take a look at that as we work through things. Then you've got your translation. So if you want to translate various different aspects into different languages, you can do that directly inside here. And you see there's a lot of different things that we can translate to our given chosen languages. So great to give us all those options to, to customize that side of things. And again, we can preview this to see what it looks like. Your payment methods, we've already seen that, and you can add additional ones inside here if you want to, so you can add as many as you wanted. Shipping rates, again, we've already seen that, but if we want to add more or edit anything, we can do that inside here. And we've also got cart recovery. So we can create a recovery email process. If you don't want to use this, you want to link this up to something that you're more used to with like MailerLite or something like that, you could still do that kind of thing. And finally, we have those integrations I mentioned a little earlier. So we open that up you can see we can easily integrate an awful lot of different options. So instead of having to copy and paste any code in, we can add a Facebook pixel inside you, Google Analytics, Google Ads, you know, MailChimp, those kinds of things. And we just need then to connect our account to our account inside Checkout X and link that up to this particular shop. And then we'll have that as an active option. Again, I'm not going to worry too much about that because I think if you want to use that it's pretty straightforward to do inside here. Okay, so let's go back to take a look at our checkout a second. So this is our checkout as it is. Let's just save that. 
And if we made a change, so for example, we wanted to change this color to something different, we'll adjust the colors on there and we'll go for something a little bit more green, should we say, to keep in with what we've got on our store, which is a plant-based store. So you would obviously customize this a little bit better with the relevant colors for your particular store. But I just want to demonstrate how easy it is to customize these various different aspects. So we'll say we're happy with those, we'll save those changes, and then we'll preview and publish it. And we can see then we've got the green checkout button and the green check boxes and all those kinds of things. So it's a little bit more in keeping with the color scheme that our store would be using. So pretty cool and really easy to do. Hop back out of there. So we'll say we're happy with those sides of things. Now let's take a look at the upsell side of things. So let's hop over into upsells. As you can see, there's a tutorial here to show you exactly how to get the upsells working, how to set things up. But honestly, it is fairly simple and straightforward. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new upsell. So we'll choose the option for create upsell. Now what this does is because it's linked to our store already, we can pull in products or categories from our store because there's that link there. We don't have to manually add things. Now it is advised to either use product or products or a category. Don't mix and match the both of those because you can potentially get into some problems with that. So let's just say we're going to add a product in. And you can see, for some reason, it hasn't pulled the images in, unfortunately. But we'll just say we want to use this particular product. We'll add that inside there. So there's our product. So then we can say, well, what are we going to use for the title for our upsell? And you can see this is where we've got that little title. So you can drop something inside there. And then the third step is to add the actual upsell itself. So if someone chooses this particular product, they'll get notified during the checkout process, there's an upsell available, and then we can choose what upsell it is. So we'll just say, we'll offer them the ball cactus, and we'll just add that in. Now you can add in additional upsells if you want to, two or three in total. I would generally recommend keeping it fairly minimal. You don't want to bombard your potential customer with too many offers and then ultimately stop them from buying the thing they wanted in the first place. So it's worth just bearing that in mind. And then we can take a look on the right hand side and it will show us what the actual sales process is. So when a customer buys product X, in this case, this particular plant, which I'm not even going to come close to trying to translate, they'll actually offer them this other upsell, which is the ball cactus. So we can create that upsell. And that's the upsell created. And now we get the performance information. So as we start to sell products on our store, we'll start to see what our conversion rate is, the number of times this is shown, times it's purchased, and the upsell revenue. Now, the reason that the time shown is useful is because we can do A-B testing. So we'll take a look at that in a moment once we've seen how this works to start off with. And we'll come back to that A-B testing. So I've quickly hopped over to my store and this is the first product we were talking about. So what we're going to do is we're going to open that up and we're going to add that to our shopping cart. So we'll add it to our cart and we'll just hop over and take a look at our cart and we'll go to we'll remove the first one, the one that's in there from previously. And what we're going to do is we're going to go through the process now of pretending to purchase this. So we'll go proceed to checkout and instead of going to the normal WooCommerce checkout, we now forward it over to our custom checkout that's part of Checkout X. And you can see there's the exact layout we saw. If we take a look at the top, you can see the domain has changed and we've got this slightly different domain inside there, which we can customize to a certain extent. So just bear that in mind, there is some options there. But this is now going to start tracking everything via Checkout X, including the upsells and all the statistics to do with that side of things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly fill out my details and then we're going to go through to the next step of actually placing an order for this particular product. Okay, so I filled everything out. We're going to go ahead and pay for this. So we'll hit pay and you see this now takes us over directly to our upsell. Now the thing is, once you do this, that order has already been placed for the first item. The upsell now is kind of separate to that. But what will happen is, if you place this order, this will get tagged onto the original order. So you'll have just one order, even though you've got an upsell in there, and maybe two or three upsells in, in total. So at this point now, you can say you want to add this on. You can add more than one if you want to. We can say no thanks to this. We'll say we'll add it to our order. And you can see now, there's all the information. So saying thank you very much. There's our order process. There's our total, all those kinds of things. And we can say we want to continue shopping. But the order has basically been completed, as we can see at the top here. Now, if you want to, you can adjust what happens with this particular upsell product. So let's just jump back into Checkout X and take a look. So here's our list of current upsells. We're going to just open this up 
And this is all the information now, like we saw when we set this up originally. But if we come down to the post purchase upsell offer, there's our ball cactus. If we click on the edit option, this now allows us to edit what happens to the pricing. If we want to give a different discount, those kinds of things. So you can see default price for all variants, default price, compare price for all variants. And you can adjust this by putting a different price inside you if you want to. So if you want to apply a different price to give them an offer, if they purchase this as part of the upsell, it can all be done inside you. So pretty easy to deal with. Now then, the next thing I want to talk about is that A-B testing. So you can see at the moment we've got this one product for this particular cat desk. Let's create a new upsell for the same product. So we're going to add the product in. We're going to choose the same product and add that. And now what we can do is we can just create a second offer. Let's just say it's a completely different product. We'll go for this money plant, for example, and we'll add that product in and make sure it's published. So now what will happen is when someone goes ahead and purchases or adds that to their basket and goes to the checkout process for this particular product, 50% of the time they will see the first upsell, 50% of the time they'll see the second upsell. And then what you can do is you can check out the statistics for each of your upsells and see which is performing better. And then you could, if you wanted to, just use that as the upsell or let it continue running if you're getting a fairly balanced sort of upsell process. But it's good we have all of those options inside Checkout X as part of the free account and allows us, like I say, to create multiple different variations and just test things, which is what we should be doing with most e-commerce products. But hopping back into the dashboard of Checkout X, you can see now that we have some information coming in because we've started to make some sales through our shopping cart. So we've got 100% conversion ratio because we've only just done one sale. So as this kind of improves, we get more and more sales, we'll get that figure fluctuated and we can find out how successful our conversion rate is. You can see the amount of upsells that we've done, whether we've got email recovery active or inactive, and also how much of our upselling credit is left from that thousand euros per month. So you can see I currently have 982 euros left. So we've got all those options inside there. And if you have multiple stores associated with your Checkout X account, they'll be available up in this top right hand section. So there's two more things I want to quickly show you before I wrap this video up. Let's hop back into the configuration options and let's go and take a look at that cart recovery. Now inside here, we can add a cart recovery email. So if we're not linking this up to a third party tool like MailChimp or MailerLite, we can do it inside Checkout X itself. So let's add a recovery email and you can see we can set the trigger at the top. So we can set this to various different timescales, set it to something that makes sense. Don't want to hassle your potential customer. Then you can drop in the subject, the email title, and the email body. And again, we can use some of these kind of short codes. You've got a call to action button title and a footer text. So while it's not anywhere near as comprehensive as what you could do with a tool like MailChimp or MailerLite to track these kinds of things and then attempt to recover the cart, you do have some built-in functionality inside here. So there's a pretty simple set of options, but it is kind of useful if you want to use it. We also have the ability to add in automatic discounts. So again, we can say we can learn more about this or we can create an automatic discount. So let's just create one. And this is where we can set all the different parameters up. So customers will see this at your checkout. So we can set various different things inside there. We can set a maximum discount usage just to make sure this doesn't get abused. And you can set what dates is active and times and so on. If you want to enable a date and time option or you're going to have it running constantly. And then you can choose the discount type, whether it's going to be you buy X and get Y, you get a percentage off a fixed amount, or you get free shipping. And then you can apply your discount values and percentages, the discount application criteria. So in other words, the minimum quantity of items that have to be in your cart before this discount becomes available. And you can see you've got a minimum account reached in carts. So you can switch between the two different variations inside here. And you can see your discount applies to whether you want to apply this to your entire order or just for very specific products. And then you can go through the same process of adding products. Or if you use collections of products to group things together, then that's an option inside here as well. So you can very easily come in and just set this up exactly as you want there, configure everything the way you want it to be configured, setting the discount values and those kinds of things. So again, it's nice to have one single location where you can manage all of the stores that you may be running, whether you're doing this for yourself or potentially for a client, at which point you probably want to have a paid account, but you kind of get to see where this is coming from. So Checkout X gives you a lot of really good options. And the fact that you now have a free account gives you even more ability to test this and see if it improves your conversion rate and your sales through your e-commerce stores. Now the free Checkout X plan gives you a lot of useful tools. And if you'd like a more comprehensive tutorial, well, let me know in the comment section below. And if enough people are interested, I'll create another video. Now, if you got value from this video, well, why not give that thumbs up button a quick slap? 
However, if you didn't get value, well, feel free to hit the thumbs down button twice, as that seems to work pretty well too. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tatson. Until next time, take care.